What's going on team? Hope you're all doing well and welcome to the start of season four. Stevenage are finally in the Premier League after an amazing turnaround in the second half of last season. We're able to clinch that second place from Leeds and I'm absolutely chuffed to see what this season's going to bring. I know for a fact it's going to be a step up though. All the games are going to be a hell of a lot harder, so we're all going to be having to look to make some improvements to the team. Now, I have took your considerations on board, and I've shortlisted some of the lads that you have mentioned. But as for some of the lads that I am going to be looking to replace, I mean, in the first team, do we need to replace many people? Probably not. It's mainly going to be players for the second team, but the likes of the left-back and right-back position, I think we're going to have to fill that. It has been mentioned about selling Bjork and as well and looking at some new centre-backs. I am going to be looking to do that. What we might do is look for someone that could partner with Brown. Tanganga, he has done decent for it, but he could go into the second team if we do sell Bjork and look for someone a little bit better, someone with a bit more quality. And the likes of Jones, he's going to be going. Max Harris has come to us yet again and said, look, Kenny, I just want to go. Just let us go. So we're going to be having to look for a replacement for him as well, which is a bit of a nightmare. But as for the rest of the second team, I mean, if we can fill the left back and right back position, bring in a new centre back, get a new centre attack and mid and a new... I don't know if it'll be someone for the right-hand side or we we'll might go for someone on the left and then Carbonero can go on to the right-hand side. And I think that team will be pretty decent. I don't think we need to look at any strikers. We're sorted. We brought in Double J, Ricky J and Ricky J Jones last season. So he'll be getting plenty of training and we'll get him sorted so he can come on if we ever need to in case of Fritzen picking up an injury or... God forbid, Semenyo picking up an injury. But we're all going to be looking for some Premier League quality players. Now, as for the transfer budget, have the board been counted with this season? They weren't last season, but let's have a look. 29 million to spend, 43k in the wage budget. I think we could do some business with that. Like, I reckon we could do some business indeed. Now, let's have a look at the board objectives, see what they want from with this season. So, youth development... I don't know why that's already crossed out. Maybe it's been from last season. God knows. I'm not too concerned about that anyway. So brand exposure within three seasons and increase the season ticket holders with at least 10% of the stadium's capacity. We should have been doing that anyway. I think I said that last season. I don't know why the fans aren't flocking into the stadium. We're finally in the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? Come on, that should be easy. Continental success, obviously nothing. Avoid relegation. I think that's pretty pretty straightforward. We've got to reach the round of 32 in the FA Cup. I wouldn't mind a decent run in a cup this season. I've said that every season, but we need to have a decent run in the cup because it'll just mean that we'll probably get more money next season, which we need, we'll need it. We will need it, especially if we're going to be getting into the Champions League final. So what's the long-term objective within two seasons in the Premier League? Finish mid-table. I'm going to say if we do the right sort of transfers, we could finish mid-table this season. I don't know if we're necessarily going to be getting Champions League football or Europa League football for that matter. Because I know for a fact this is going to be difficult. But I reckon mid-table, that's, that's doable. That is definitely doable. Financial, reduced player wages by 9000 a week. Ooh, I read, no bother. You can only imagine that the players are going to be starting to want more money. I did try and sort out a lot of the contracts last season so the lads are just pretty much happy with what they've got but we'll go over some of the lads that are on the transfer list Bjork and I don't think is on there just yet but I might look to put him on but Denton it's been emotional mate but he's going to be going so is Van Kooten got both of them on the transfer list both 67 rated overall 26 and 24 they're not going to be Premier League players so that's why they're on there and then the rest of these are mainly the youth academy players that just haven't worked out for it. So Ed Rose is on there. Unfortunately, Max Harris is on there. He was going to be a hell of a player for it, but he's just moaned too much and he wants to go. So that's what we're going to have to do. He's worth £9 million, so I reckon we could get anywhere up to 12 13 for him. And I reckon that would give her a decent budget to bring in someone decent, if not better, than Max Harris. We've got Martin on there. Got Daub. I'm not going to be using Daub, so why not just sell him on? Mitchell's on there. 
Ibanez De Silva, he never played a game. Neither did Lewicki. Carmona didn't either. So we could make a little bit of money off these as well, which I think will be decent. Oscar Wright is on the loan list and so is Edwards. So I think these could be all right for her. If Wright comes back after a season away, we might be able to just sell him on if he's not boosted up in that potential. We've got Murphy on the loan list as well. Brought this lad in from the Youth Academy team. 66 rated overall. He looks decent. So... Some time away, I think he'll come back and he'll be an unreal goalkeeper for her. Maybe someone that we could use in the future or, yet again, just use him to sell on and then make some money off him. As for the players that I am going to be looking at, I'm not going to go through all of these because it will be far too long. It'll take an absolute lifetime to go through them all. I mean, goalkeepers, we're not looking at goalkeepers anymore. As for right-backs... I am just looking at Dest, I would say. Wagnerman has been mentioned a couple of times. He was a legend in the Leeds United career mode, but I don't know if I'll necessarily bring him into this one. It's all going to come down to price anyway for how much these players are going to cost with. But we know Dest is only 3.8 million. I think he's going to be one of the first players that will bring in the team. 75 rated overall. Can play right back or left back. I think that'll be an ideal signing for him straight away. So some of the centre-backs that have been mentioned. So there was uh, Red Sauce. Is that how you pronounce his name? Red Sauce. We'll go there again. Red Sauce. 23 years old. Currently plays for Leverkusen. I reckon he would probably cost with quite a bit of money, but he can't play centre-back, right-back and left-back, which is looking decent. But this lad here, Dejalo, I know for a fact he's got a decent potential on him. So I reckon if I was going to go for anyone, I think it's going to be him. Van der Berg is still going to be under consideration. I think he'll be decent. I mean, we don't know anything about him. Still, I'm going to have to re-scout him. I don't know why the scouts are losing the reports, like, but they need to sort it out. They really do. As for other players, though, is there any, realistically anyone else? Kamara was mentioned. I've used him in a few career modes before this, and he is a decent player. But 22 years old, I can only imagine that he's probably going to be quite a bit of money because I reckon he's probably in mid-70s, something along the lines of that. So he he could be someone to go for, but again, it's going to be if the price is right for him. Moreno's still there, though. I mean, for a million, 70 overall, could we use him as a backup? I think that could be decent, maybe worthwhile if we've got any money left at the end of this transfer window that we've got to look to. Just bring him in, use him every now and again, and sell him on for a profit. That could be the way to go. Is it Kurunde? He was mentioned as well, though, 23 years old, currently playing at Sevilla. I think this would be another great signing for the team. He would probably go into the first team, and then Tanganga would go into the second team. We can sell Bjork and on then. But he would be decent. I know for a fact he would, but I reckon he's going to cost for quite a bit of money. But Ortega was mentioned in the left-back position. Argentinian. You know I love the Argentinians. Another lad that I think would be decent to bring into the team. I mean, look at all them that he's potentially got. Acceleration, sprint speed, agility, balance, jumping, stamina, strength. Whoa, he's got a lot, like, he's got a lot. He's got that speed dribbler trait as well. Could be someone that would be decent. Him and Dest, what a partnership that would be. But you know for a fact they would both go into the first team. So some of that oh, joking there, some of the lads that are in the first team, the likes of Hickey, would he start complaining if he wasn't getting first team football? Oh, That's the only issue in regards to that. Munoz, we'll go with Munoz. He was mentioned as well. Someone else that I reckon would probably cost with quite a bit. Zagre though, used him a little bit in the Leeds United career mode. And I think he would be decent to bring into the team. I don't know if he would cost that much either. 20 years old, currently playing at Monaco. I mean, I'd probably want to bring him in and play him in the first team. So again, that may be an issue with Hickey. But could be worth doing it. Could be worth doing it. As for the rest of the lads here, Brandon Williams is another lad that I think would be great to bring into the team. Can play left back and right back. Only 5 million. Well, between 5 and 8. It's his weekly wage that puts us off him. 41,000 a week. It's quite a bit. So we'd have to look to cut that in half if we were going to bring him into the team. Maybe he's even less than that because he would be one of the highest paid players. And would that be worth doing? Probably not. But he is going to be someone that I am going to be considering. I mean, the other lads, Cabal and stuff like that. I'm going to keep an eye on him. 70 overall. He could go into the second team. That might be the way to go for something along the lines of that. For the centre of the park though, do we realistically need to look at anyone in the centre of the park? We definitely need to fill that centre attack mid position. But as for centre mids and CDMs, we're not desperate for anyone. I might potentially 
which could shock you, sell Masengo on. I don't know whether to sell him on. His potential's around the mid-80s, but we could look to bring in someone that's going to be, I don't know, world beater, that's going to have a potential that's going to go through the roof. And there is a couple of lads in here that I think would be worthwhile bringing to the team. This lad being one of them, I think it's Fernandinho's regen, but I'm sure he's got a good potential on him. Can play in that CDM position or someone else that would look to bring in for that centre-back position. I think he would be good to definitely look at. As for the rest of the lads, though, is anyone else worth looking at here? Holzek, I put him on the list. I think it would be decent, but for 19 million. Could be a good replacement for Max Harris, though. That's why he is on the list. Jack Clark is still in there as well. 8 million. I reckon that could be a decent signing as well. Like, could be a decent signing. We never used him when we came to the Leeds United career mode. I did throw the likes of Willick in here as well. And for 12 million, if we sold Masengo on, he could be a good replacement. I know he's got a decent potential on him. Who else is there? I put Sean, Lang La Sean Langstaff. There you go. And Sean Longstaff on there. I mean, 15 million, it is quite a bit, and his wages massive. I just thought it would be a good idea to have him partner him with Matty. But for that money, probably not, because there's this lad, Cameron Vinga. I don't need to say anything about him. I think he's got a 90 potential. Looks absolutely amazing. 18 million. If I did sell Masengo, I would definitely go in for this lad. I think we're going to knock his wage down a little bit. 77 rated overall. It might be the way to go, to tell you the truth. I think he would be a decent player to bring into the team. We know he's decent. He's got reasonable stats. I think he would work out really well for her. And you know for a fact this lad would turn into a Champions League player 100%. Left-hand side, though, a couple of other people I have been considering. Dilro's son, I think, would be a decent replacement for Max Harris. That's why these lads are in here, realistically. 19,000, 19, 19 million. I think he would be a good, good player to bring in. Looks decent. 91 acceleration, 99 sprint speed. Ideal for her. A couple of other lads, though, Velasco. Oh, they're not looking to sell him. But I would have looked to bring him in, potentially. As for that centre attack and mid-position, though, this might be the lad to go for. Angel Gomez. We're all going to be rescouting him, because yet again, he's another one that they've just... Oh, we've lost the paperwork, Kenny. Soz about that. You'll have to rescout him. Love to bring this lad into the team. It was mentioned a good few seasons ago. I think he'd be absolutely unreal. He would have to play in the second team, though, which could be a problem, because there's no chance Palacios is losing that first team place. Like, not a chance... But Dela Cruz was mentioned as well. I think he looks good. I have had a little look at him. I mean, acceleration, sprint speed. He's got good vision. Could be ideal for her. I think he would be another one that would be decent to look at. As for the rest of the players, though, I think Doku was mentioned. And I would love to bring him in. I mean, he was another lad that did play in the Leeds United career mode. He was decent, but he's got bad stamina, which is a bit of an issue. But what could make him a superstar in this one? He was decent. He was decent, but this lad is a train cow. I'm sure, I don't know if that's necessarily how you pronounce his name, but let us know in the comments. But from Anderlecht, looking good. He's looking good. He's got decent acceleration and sprint speed. He's got that stamina. So this lad could be a good replacement for Harris because that's what we're going to have to look at. Someone with good potential that's going to be able to come in and do the business like Harris was. This lad, though, could be the man for the job. Terrible jokes as usual, but... Again, another lad from Anderlecht. I think he's got a decent potential on him as well. High-low work rates, which is good. He's got acceleration, sprint speed on him, attacking position. He's got good dribbling and finishing. If he's the right price, I might go in for him. I think he'd be decent. I did throw Reese Nelson in there, but 80 overall, 22 million. Not a chance of my going in for him. Like Barrial, I was considering him. He did have a release clause of 3.6 million, but... Vitiz have pulled the trigger on that, and now his release clause is 20 million, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to go in for him. Like I say, I don't think we need to look at strikers, even though Ferreira would be decent to bring in in that centre attack and mid position. I know he is uh, being used in Jani's career mode as well, so do I want to bring him in when you already know what he can do if you do watch him? Which you should. You definitely should because he's absolutely class. But look all the stats on him, man. He's going to be decent, isn't he? He's going to be decent, but it might be one for a future career mode. I am looking to do one that's close to my, to my heart. wonder if you can guess what that could be, but that will be coming soon. But as for a couple of the other players, there was... Who else was there? Yes, there was Awusu still. Ribery's regen. I think it would be decent for 11 million. Could he be the way to go? 11 million. I reckon we could probably get that for Max Harris. 
and then going for this lad straight away. You know he's going to be good when it's Ribery's regen. And then last but certainly not least, there's Corman. Can play on the left and the right-hand side and the centre attack and mid position. Do like the looks of this kid. I think he's got a good potential on him. So once all the scout reports come back, that's when we're going to make our decisions. But as for the time being, we're going to get into the pre-season tournament. See if we can make some extra money from that. If we do make it the final, I will be playing that. But we'll get through it, see what happens, and then we can make some decisions from there. And we've made it at the final. We're playing well, Ghent, I believe. Well, is it? Yes, it is Ghent. So I'm looking at the lads to pick up the first victory of this season. Be great to lift that cup. We're all going to be needing all the money we can possibly get, especially when we're going to be going in for higher quality players. I mean, don't get us wrong, 30 million, it's not to be sniffed at, but if we're going to have 35, it's definitely going to be a lot better. And I reckon... By the looks of Ghent, we should be beating them. Super Semenyo, he will hopefully be coming out in this one. And we'll be bringing home that trophy and a little bit extra money. So, let's get into this one. Pick up that win, eh? Come on! Ghent are in here. Van Kooten's come out. Van, not Van Kooten, what the hell am I on about? Van de Voort, man. Jesus. Can they get in behind them? Oh, they're in again, yeah. Maybe I've been far too confident about this. Because Ghent, the 1 0 up. Van der Voort couldn't do the business for with that time. I'm, I'm pretty shocked at this. Like, defending was diabolical. Look how much space he's got, man. We're definitely 110%. Need some decent centre backs into the team. Like, Van der Voort, he could have saved that. He could have saved that. He's still on holiday, ain't he? Well, it still sunning it up on the beach, man. Sort it out, mate. Now. Brown has been able to find Ricky. Come on. Semenyo. Semenyo's waited for Bitter. Chance. Bitter! What's going on with these lads, like? They're going to have a talk and do it half time if this is how it's going to be. Yes, you should look disappointed, mate. That was shocking. Again, or in again. Van der Voort saves it this time though. We've just not been on, just not been on my game at all. That's all I can say. I mean, it's not the greatest of shots, but they were in yet again, man. Ball is through. Van der Voort. What? I kind of keep saying it, but this defense is absolutely shocking, man. Look at that, just little ball through. They're doing absolutely no. Tanganga's just stand, he's just standing there. Cup of tea. Oh, is the game on? Is it? Oh, I didn't realise. Mug. Sango, come on. Ricky. Ball to Bitter. Bitter. Jones. Ricky. Back to Bitter. Bitter. Come on, Bitter. Who needs Max Harris? Bitter has put me on level terms. I was always going to say he's put me 1-1 one, one up. It doesn't make sense. He's put me on level terms. It's now 1-1. One, one. Nice little bit of 1-2 between Double J and Bidder here. Nothing good. Ricky J Jones, he's playing well. And he's up to like a 72 or a 73 already as well. But the game is on now. It is on. Through to Ricky. Still Ricky. Somehow found some menu. Oh, he's passed it to List. List for the winner. Come on, List. He's put it wide. List, man. Brought him on because I thought he's got the pace. He's normally got the finishing. Not there, though. Not there. Tanganga, big mistake. Big, big mistake. Not this late. I do not believe it. Tanganga has just cost with it. Like, what was he doing, man? What are you doing, mate? Ball came in, just waiting for that header. Van der Voort gets a hand to it, but it's not enough. I don't think we've got enough time to score another goal here. What a way to start this season off, eh? Well, certainly not the start that I was hoping for, but what can you do? It has given away a little bit more money. So we've currently got 32 million to spend now. Well, I've got a couple of transfer offers as well, so we'll have a look at them. To go to the transfer hub, what you got for a 
So we've got an offer in for Van Kooten. It's for 1.1 million. I've accepted one already, but I'm going to accept this as well. I don't even know where that is. KFC, there you go. He had an option between KFC or McDonald's. I think he's going to be choosing KFC. It is finger licking good, so <laughs> there you go. But we'll accept that. We've also got an offer in for Big Curtis Jones. It's for 5.6 million. I reckon I would prefer to get 7.3 for him. So I think I'll negotiate that contract. And then once that money's come in, we're going to start bringing in some of the new lads into the team. Like I've said, I reckon it's going to be Dest first off. And I think that'll start things off. For that'll start things off pretty well. And we'll be able to get into the start of the season. The first game up, it's not going to be an easy one. We're going to have a challenge straight away because it is going to be against Manchester United. So... If that isn't a test, I do not know what is. But either way, we'll get these deals done and then we'll look at making some transfers. We got that deal done for Curtis Jones. It was only 6.6 .6 million, but I think that's still pretty good. I think that is still pretty good. And as you can see, we've pulled the trigger on Dest for 3.8 million. I think it's an absolute bargain. I'm pretty happy that he's got a real face in this. I didn't expect him to. So the only thing with this is, what's he going to be wanting? So... I'm going to say important. He would be playing first team football, but I don't want to give him crucial because I don't want to, I don't know, throw that cat among, amongst the pigeons, if you want to call it that, and mess up the rest of the team by the likes of the wild one saying, how I made, I still want first team football. So he's happy with important. I'm happy with that as well. So let's move things on. We're going to go for five years. What are you thinking about that, mate? He's sitting back. Five year deal, mate, eh? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. He's happy with that one. No release clause on you. We're not having any team come in and buy you like we have from Ajax. Ajax have definitely lost out on this one, like, because he looks like a hell of a player. Maybe we could have went for someone that had, like, a lot more potential. But realistically, are you going to get someone 75 rated overall at 3, 4 million? Not really. So I'm going to have to sort his wage out here. I'm going to... Oh, you can have 12... 12, I'm going to offer him a decent p amount of money. So I'm going to offer him 400,000. I know you guys might think, oh, that's far too much, Kenny. But I want this deal to get over the line. I don't want him to go, nah, you haven't me life. I flew all the way over and you've you've just screwed us. So what's he thinking of that? It's not nah, it's not too bad, that. 13,000 appearances. I'm going to take the appearances off. It will push the wage up potentially. But he might be happy with that. Let's see. 14,000. 14,000 for him. I don't think that's bad at all. We're going to accept that. Welcome to the team, Dest. Welcome to Stevenage. Come and shake me hand, son. Come on. Shake that hand. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we've got a report back on Angel Gomez and De La Cruz. And as you can see, De La Cruz is 81 rated overall. So you know for a fact he's going to cost quite a bit. We we'll have now sold Curtis Jones. We've got like 4.5 million back in the budget for that. So we're all sitting around 30 three or 34 million to spend and for 25 million i think he would be far too much to go for now the only problem with angel gomez 77 rated overall i think that's decent can play in all them positions especially the left wing as well could he come in and be used there the only issue with him i mean 14 million i would be quite happy to spend 14 million on him Sixty-two thousand a week in wages though i don't want to bring him into the team he'd be the highest rated pl highest paid player coming into the team and he wouldn't even be the highest rated player i know for a fact that that would probably cause a lot of issues so i am a bit skeptical of bringing him into the team as much as i do want to i think you'd be a great signing for her. the only thing i can think to do is we can go in for him and then maybe he's look to see if he could knock his wage right down offer him a decent bonus for taking less wage that's the only thing i could think as for some of the other lads though we've got a uh, report back, forgot there, for Doku, 16 million, between 16 and 24, I think that's quite a bit to tell you the truth, Trin Cow, I think that's how you pronounce his name, but 16 to 24, again, quite a bit, someone has gone in for Man, so it's Aston Villa, and I think they've offered about 17.3 for him, and again, I think he looks absolutely fantastic, this kid, I really do, but what's sticking out to me is, if we put, uh, what's his name? Carbonero on the right-hand side. Because, I mean, he can only play on the right-hand side. But then we're going for Owusu. 
He's Frank Ribery's regen. I know I've said it loads, but he can play in that centre forward position as well. He would only cost with 10 million. Well, on the lower end anyway, but 10 million. The weekly wage is decent. I think he's going to be a lad that we'll go in for because we have had a deal come in for Max Harris. We've accepted 13.5. I think it was from Levante, it was. So once that deal goes through, I think I'm going to go in for that Iwusu or whatever you called him. Uh, Iwusu, we're going to go in for him. And centre attack and mid, I am still a bit up in the air about it because oh, his wage is just so high, which is so disappointing. The only thing, like I say, we could do is potentially go in for him. See if he'll drop his wage and take things from there. But I mean, where is he? Ferreira, he could still be an option. He can play in that centre attack and mid position. I think he'd be a fantastic pickup while still waiting on a scout report on him. So I might wait. I might wait for this deal to go through for Harris. Bring in a Wusu or whatever it is. And then we'll look to bring in a new centre attacker mid. Because at the minute, we'll have got Double J that can fill that spot. Ricky J Jones. He's doing all right in training as well. I think he's up to like a 73, 74. So I think he would be decent. We're going to have a look here, actually. We'll have a look because he is in the training. Where is he? Ricky J Jones, he's up to a 73. So it's not like we're stuck for someone in that position. And I do still want to look to bring in a new centre back. 100%. So I'll maybe wait a little bit. It looks like we'll probably be getting into this game against Man United though, so we'll get some training for the lads. We'll see if we can boost some of them up. Kana's in there because he's got potential to be special, but Jones getting yet another A. He is proven why he should realistically be getting that centre attack and mid position. He would be saving with a lot of money as well. 15 million could be the way to go. Like, we'll see if anything comes through in regards to the Max Harris deal. We've got a transfer offer in for Lance Mitchell. Is he on? He is. So I'm just going to accept that. See you later, mate. Waiting on these deals to go through, though. It's taking its time in this game. It's going to be massive. And I've just seen there that Harris has been sold. Carmona, there we go. We're getting some of the deals over the line here. We should have a little bit of money to spend. The wild one. I'm going to be keeping a hold of the wild one. He's not going to be going anywhere. So Besiktas, no, not a day. So that deal did go through for Harris. So we've got an extra 10 million. So what I might do is, so 43 million to spend. That's a pretty pretty good budget. So what I think I am going to do is we'll go in for that Awusu and then we'll get into the game against Man United and then I'll leave the rest of the signings for the next episode. I think that's going to be the way to go. And then we'll have the rest of the scout reports on all the lads as well. So it'll give you a good idea. But for 10 million, this lad is an absolute bargain. It's daylight ribbery. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Where is he? I'll find him. I'll get the deal done. And then we'll get the de in, into the game against Man United. With that deal done for Wusu, he has a look at how the teams are lining up now. So this is a team that's going to be going up against Man United. So not much change here, to tell you the truth. It's just that Dest has made it into the first team. It just makes sense. Until we get a new left back, that can go into the second team. Dest will be moving over to the right-hand side. Hickey will be on the left. But for the time being, this is how things are going to line up. I mean, once we get in a new centre-back as well, I think that'll be decent. But we'll have a look at Dest while we're here. But pace, 95. Oh, dribbling, 80. This is looking good, like 3.8 million ridiculous accelerations 99 agility 90 sprint speed 91 stamina 73 he's got all the stuff that we need like all the stuff that we need flare trait it is looking good it is looking good now as for the second team Wusu, like i say we've got that deal over the line it costs with 10 million he signed a five-year contract i think he's on about 17 and a half thousand a week which i don't think is bad at all so we've got him on the left i mean decent pace decent dribbling He's got good acceleration, good balance, good sprint speed. Oh, he's just another one. Dribbling, finishing. I think I might have covered that already, but there you go. He does look really good. And then we've got Carbonero. He's going to be on the right-hand side now. I might change his first position to right mid if he is going to be playing there permanently. Same with Jones. If we get a new centre attack in mid, he will be coming out and he'll be the backup to Fritzen. But could this be a way that we'll go? We could use Jones in the centre of the park and look at a backup striker again. I mean, there's a parrot and things like that that would cost a hell of a lot less than Gomez, even though I would love to bring him into the team. But there you go. And then once we get a new centre back in, I think it'll be decent to have Juarez and also Tanganga 
on the centre-back positions for the second team. And like I say, once we get a new left-back, and then Wood, he probably will be getting replaced with the wild one. But there you go, Wood could always go into the centre centre back position so we have got options we've got plenty of options i think it's looking good i'm happy with the, the signings that we've made it might only be two but i am quite happy with them so now we're going to get into this game against man united's we first game in the premier league i don't know how it's going to go but we're going to give it one hell of a shot so <laughs> let's get into it then dest matty come on the wild one Great ball through, a shot. Easy for De Gea. But, look on the positive side. We've had an attack, and that's the main thing. Corner for Man United now, then. What they're going to do with it. Havertz with a ball in. Always seem to buy Havertz. Gelhard can't get the ball away. Havertz yet again, James. Dan James. Dan James. Put them 1-0 up. Not happy about that. Not happy about that at all. I knew this was coming though. I just knew it would. What can you do? It was a hell of a shot from the kid, I must admit. I mean, look at that. Absolutely smashes it. No chance. No chance for we're there. Can we get an equaliser? That is the question though. Gelhart. Kind of find the ball to Masengo. Fair enough. It's Matty. Who has found Bitter. Bitter. Come on, Bitter! Bitter puts one one more. Come on! Bitter equalises. The game is back on. I didn't think we'd even get a chance to score against Man United. But David De Gea has had a nightmare there. And Bitter, yet again, bags the goal for it. Puts, puts it on level terms. There we go. The game is back on. Just hoping it's not like the game against Ghent. We will suffer a 90th minute. Winner, I suppose. Is that where I'm going with that? Well, there you go. That's where I'm going. What you got, Bitter? Cutting it back in. Nelly wiped out. Should have took the free kick. Palacios. Should have took the free kick. Great save from David De Gea there. Palacios normally would have been slotting that away. Gelhart. Great ball through. Palacios. Semenyo to pull him. Oh, Semenyo. I had the chant going in my head. Great opportunity. But David De Gea showing his quality there. What a save, mate. Fair play to you. Fair play, son. Dest. Masengo. Come on, what are you made of? Iwusu. How quick are you, mate? It's looking pretty quick. Iwusu. Can he make an impact? Iwusu. Ah, nah. Come out, though. Masengo. To bit on. That didn't work out, did it? Didn't work out. 1-1 against Man United. I will take that. Sitting in 8th position. We've definitely started better than we did last season when we got smashed off Derby 3-0. So things are definitely looking up. Dest, absolutely amazing. For 3.8 million, I am chuffed that we've brought him into the team. Uwusu, he also played well. I mean, like I said, daylight ribbery on him. <laughs> definitely. But as for the rest of the teams in the league, let's see who's at the bottom. I know there's only one game played, but... May as well have a look. So Aston Villa, Derby. So Derby have come up instead of Leeds. So I'm quite surprised at that. But there you go. And Sheffield United sitting rock bottom. They've been beaten 5-0 by the looks of it. So who else is there? So we've got Man City. They've smashed them 5-0. That's who's won that game. But they're sitting top. Liverpool in second. Arsenal, then Wolves. Then you've got Man United in Forest, who also came up with us. Fair enough. Is this going to be how the table's going to be looking? Man City and Liverpool sitting top of the table. I reckon it's going to be between them two. And like I say, if we can stay around 8th to 10th, I'll be really, really chuffed with that. As for the rest of the signings, though, I'm going to leave them until the next episode. We do still have £35 million to spend. We did get a couple of extra scout reports back. I think it was mainly for the left-backs and centre-backs that we're looking at. So we'll have a quick look at them. And then you guys can maybe suggest who we should go in for. But... We did get Kunde. There we go, 23 million. Maybe it's a little bit much for him. I must admit, Kamara, same 20 million, but 80 rated. Could it be worth spending a majority of our budget on a really, really good centre-back? He's got good growth on him. But Dejalo, 10 million. I think that would be the way to go, 76 overall. If we brought him in and then we sell on Bjorkander, I think that could be, could be decent business, that. Restos. A red sauce, 17. 
well, 16 million he would cost. 79 rating overall, though. That could be a decent one as well. It's just his wage, again, 45,000 a week. Dejalo is on 24. But we definitely get that down a little bit as well. I think there was some other reports came in for some of the other lads in regards to left back. So, Zagre, 6.7 million. That could be the way to go for him. I think that would be decent. I think he makes more sense than Williams, who, yes, he's a little bit less, but his weekly wage is more. That could be definitely the way to go, I think. Ortega, we've got the details back on him. 10 million, 76 rated overall, but he would definitely want first team football. I think Zagre could be the one, like, he could be the one. And then we're all just waiting on reports on the likes of Jesus uh, Ferreira. Shall we go in for Kamavinga? Let us know, because I would love to bring that kid into the team. I think if we sold Masengo and then brought him in, we'd, we'd spend maybe around eight, seven, eight million on him. And I think that would be a good bit of business. But there you go. We're all going to be leaving the episode there. If you have enjoyed it, drop a little like. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button and join Kiro United. But as always, I'll see you in the next one.